Good evening, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining this special HKU Journalism Zoom event. Uh, it's a, a rather somber occasion. It's the uh, second anniversary of the military coup and the uh, outbreak of violence in Myanmar. Uh, it was in February 1, 2021. Uh, when the military uh, decided to topple the civilian government in, in Myanmar. Uh, uh, the opposition was basically dismantled. Opposition leader Aung San Suu Kyi and others of, the, of her party were put in jail, and many news outlets were shut down and journalists arrested. Many others fled across the border into neighboring Thailand, where they continue to work until this day. Uh, we decided that it would be important for HKU journalism here to uh, mark this anniversary uh, by having uh, all of you join us and participate in a, a Zoom chat, in this Zoom chat with two of our uh, distinguished guests. Um, with me, I have uh, someone here who's studying with us at HKU Journalism. Uh, Such uh, Suchai was a, is a Master of Journalism candidate uh, student. Uh, before that, she was working for Agence France Press uh, in uh, Myanmar, and she covered uh, many of the events around the, uh, around the coup. And uh, I'm glad she was able to join us. She's here with us in uh, Hong Kong today. So thank you for joining us, Suche. And also uh, uh, we have uh, uh, with us coming, uh, Joe, Shan, uh, Joe Shan Liang is with us from Honolulu, Hawaii. So I won't say good evening to you because it's probably not evening time uh, where you are, where he's taking some time off uh, for, for studying at the University of Hawaii in Manoa, which I know very well. But uh, Josan is an independent journalist. He writes about human rights, political transactions, and issues related to the military coup. Right, his, uh, you probably have seen some of his work appearing in Time Magazine, Foreign Policy, the LA Times, uh, Al Jazeera, and many other out, uh, outlets. He's also a guest contributing writer for the Pulitzer uh, Center on Intensive Armed Conflict in, in Burma during the 2018-2020 period. And he won a Human Rights Press Award in the past, and he was a uh, He's also won many, many awards, including and, and some accommodations, including SOPA awards. And you can find him on Twitter. Thank you uh, both for, for joining us. Uh, I'll start with you uh, since you're the furthest away, uh, Jason. Thank you very much from Hawaii. Uh, uh, but what is, the, what is the situation like now, two years on in, in Myanmar, both in Yangon and in the countryside? Because I have to admit, uh, before we started this Zoom, I was trying to find some information, and it, it's there's not as much. Um, before it was front page news two years ago, but now it's kind of dropped off the front pages. So, up to uh, bring us up to date. What's the current situation? What are the living conditions? What's going on now in Myanmar, uh, Joe San? Um, thank you very much. Uh, uh, so, can I pronounce correctly your name, like a kiss or something? Yes. <laughs> Okay, yes, yeah, thank you very much for yeah, inviting me today. Um, so, uh, generally, it's really hard to talk, you know, uh, to talk about Myanmar, so what happening, especially what was happened and uh, what what happened, yeah, what, yeah, what is happening, or so what, what, what is happening right now, because so many things and uh, so much changes. So, basically, I can talk about, uh, you know, the after, you know, Almost like you know, two years, military seat power, and there are uh, like thousands or like yeah, the industry display person, uh, display you know, and also like uh, especially the whole the country become you now at war, the civil war, almost in you know, the country like less you know the countryside, even before never having the conflict like an you know, conflict. What I mean. Uh, like you know, Sakai, Makwe. So this is historically the Central Burma area. There, there, um, there, there was uh, no fighting between, uh, you know, the military and like an organization. There is so right now there's a few fighting. Especially, uh, we can very obviously see that, uh, like Sakai region is the most. Uh, the, you know, fighting the situation, and also, and on also like you know, like Kashan, Karan, so other area. There's just so many, you know, happening and the fighting. And on the other hand, uh, for especially for journalists, most of the people, including myself, and also many of my friends, also to flee the country, and they also, you know, they are they are also working from Thailand, and they are also, you know, the same situation for like you know people in the Myanmar. 
-hmm. and and also uh so we can also uh, obviously can see that uh, the Myanmar military like you know Myanmar hunters so they used uh widely the air strike against resistant group so this is what the most targeted for the children and also the women and uh, especially for vulnerable community so who are uh, and the civilians so this is there. They are the most targeted uh, killing and also arrested people, like thousands of people were arrested. And also, so everyone who are living inside in Myanmar could be arrested anytime without any reason. So if they want to arrest someone, they can come and take it, take it just, uh, just like, you know, very, like a barbarian way. So they don't care about the law and they don't have any, you know, proper note. Just take bad and uh, even if they want kids, they mm -hmm. they are just like uh they can do that and they are always so mm -hmm. yeah we can see like you know very obviously uh, last December they also have four uh human rights activate and also democratic activate so so the world uh, like you know many so you and uh, international community talking about uh mm -hmm. like you know to do like you know death center but mm -hmm. they don't care about anything and they do that uh they did it so such as the way the people you know for Myanmar, uh like for overall can say they are living in the head just real head so the people's yeah the people are really really struggling in economy and politically and every day they are living life their situation are uh, really in such so recently i talked with many of so my friends who are living in yangon and also rakai and so they said, uh, like you know, eight around six p.m. just evening, they can go outside. Mm -hmm. They said, okay, I really worry about my security and can go out. Uh, even daytime, they have to check their security, uh, mm -hmm. such as living you know, in security, not only physically and uh, but also mentally. They are living, they are facing the situation in Myanmar. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh, Josan, stay with me for one minute. Just what what is specifically yes. the, the situation now for the the media? I mean, and I'm talking about the independent media. Does it still exist? Yes. Oh yes. So, but so in this time, Myanmar. So they they are not uh you know working from Myanmar. So mainly they the media they uh they they some media you know especially based in Thailand and some are in a uh, uh, but the, the thing is, for like who are working inside in the Mesa, uh, they are really, you know, having a problem. So every journalist in living in the Mesa, one, you know, out, they, 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 they already arrested in front of the police, you know, Thai authority. And also, they, they, they can also go out, you know, and they, you know, they have to check uh, for every single time to the security and also the Thai police also really restrict. And then, yeah, this is like, you know, living situation for like overall the independent media. So they are like, you know, working front abroad. And so working from the Bangkok and Thai, yeah, especially the Thailand. So inside there's a few people, I think, so, but they are really working in Thailand. The, uh, so I can say there is no, there's only a few people, so media based in Myanmar, inside Myanmar right now, especially in the ethnic area. Okay. Well, great. Uh, Suchai, let me bring you in uh, to the conversation here now. First, I'd just like to ask you uh, personally, I mean, what it's, you're here in Hong Kong, you know, you, you left Myanmar. I mean, what, how do you keep up with what's going on back there? First of all, I mean, how do you, you must be you must be trying to do your studies here as a master's student, but also keep up with the news back home. And how do you what do you how do you how do you do that? Um, well, actually, that's something that I pay attention to uh, on a daily basis because uh, I, as a journalist and as a um, journalism student, um, what's happening in Myanmar is really important to me. Although I'm living abroad, studying abroad, because like it's affecting um, my community, you know, uh, my relatives, my uh, the people of Myanmar that I care. So on a daily basis, I read news like uh, um, Frontier Myanmar, Myanmar Now. Um, at sometimes um, when I don't have times. I listen to BOA, 
uh, BBC um, RFA um, because they provide um, you know daily uh, rounds of rounds of news um, that uh, cover you know entire uh, uh, situations uh, that has happened in the day. So. Um, so, so uh, I keep myself busy. Um, you know, I, I keep myself uh, uh, informed about uh, what's happening in Myanmar. So, yeah, I know, I know almost everything uh, that has happened. That's uh, that's happening in Myanmar. Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, and continuing on that, I'm just curious. I mean, you, uh, it must be personally difficult for you to be so far away. You've got family there. You've got colleagues and friends inside of Myanmar. It's a great opportunity, I'm sure, to be here in Hong Kong. But do you somewhat miss being there? <laughs> Um, of course, definitely, because, you know, um, that's where, you know, the people I, I, I love, right? Um, the, you know, my beloved people, my family, my friends, and, and like, um, you know, the, the people that I care, um, they still live there. So also being able to, uh, you know, um, study here in Hong Kong and, you know, uh, staying safely, but um, it also um, affects me uh, anyway, and in a sad way, because, like, I can't be there with my uh, family. And uh, like, you know, seeing what military is um, doing and then torturing and then like um, uh, killing the people and then burning the houses in, in the, you know, everywhere in the country where I come from in Rakhai style, where, you know, uh, middle Myanmar, central Myanmar in like other ethnic area, you know, that, you know, what's happening uh, in, in all of those areas is very like uh, saddening, like disheartening to see. Um, so um, yes, I, I miss my, you know, my family, you know, the people, um, you know, not being able to do anything about it also, it's really a uh, sad thing um, mm -hmm. because as a journalist, um, you, you, you can just do reporting, but you can do anything, you can overturn the situation because, um, you know, the people in power uh, don't care about the people, right? So they're just doing whatever they like, um, um, you know, um, like political ambition that doesn't really, um, 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 that doesn't really uh, reflect with what people want. So, um, yeah, it's it's really a sad thing. Um, so, yeah. Okay, jo Josan, I saw you nodding your head. I mean, do you, do you feel the same way? Do you you're away from family and colleagues and friends back there? But how does that make you feel? Oh yeah. So today, the so same mornings, I feel really upset, and also I'm just wearing my you know black <laughs> shirt because I feel uh, myself. So even and the class, and I, I'm not good feeling actually. Same to say, uh, because I, I some of my friends I lose, and also many of my friends are in jail in Diego, and also some we are in Myanmar, and some are becoming a fighter. Uh, and some are because you know in the living in Thailand, some are like you know really horrible situation in the middle. Uh, they are facing, so I. Only, you know, I, I can do, they are talking, okay, I, how can I help you, anything I can do, you know, only I'm just watching and talking, because I'm feeling so, like, you know, guilty myself, because I flee the country, I'm safe, but I, but I never feel, you know, safe, like mentally, because I also the same feeling with them, and, and also myself, I'm just physically safe, but I want to be uh, with that, you know, I love my friend and also my family who are living inside in Myanmar as well. So all the time just talking with them and also, yeah, yeah, physically I would say, I can say, but, you know, mentally I don't know. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, if uh, please, everybody listening in, if you've got some questions, just put those questions in the chat box and we'll try to get to those if we can. Uh, Josan, let me stay with you for a second. I'll ask you as well, uh, Suche. I, I, I'm trying to get a sense of how many journalists are in is still in jail now or in prison facing charges. As of December, Committee to Protect Journalists said something like 42 were in jail, but we don't know if that was a smaller number or a larger number. And then uh, apparently there was an amnesty in January, and some were released. But I mean, what do we know? How many are in jail, or, or, or there are some in jail that we don't that haven't been recorded. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so still, yeah, 42, at least 42 journalists are in jail, so, yeah. Uh, but, so recently, the, the military also, you know, really, like, you know, anniversary, but, anniversary, but, you know, they didn't include any, you know, number of journalists. Um, yeah, they are staying, you know, many, so, like, I think at least 42, uh, like, at least 42 journalists in, inside, in, yeah, you know, in jail right now. Uh -huh. 
Okay. And what, just stay with you for a minute, Josan, what are these journalists being charged with? What are the, what is their crime? I'm told that they're being charged on a variety of things, something called 505A and, or, or, or other counterterrorism. What exact, why exactly are they being arrested and what are they being charged with? Oh uh, yeah, this is so radically, especially, so, uh, especially the journalists, they didn't make any cry against, uh, you know, them. They, are, they are just doing their work, uh, just reporting and what they, especially the, the one who feel, you know, their, you know, work and also like, you know, trying to keep everything what they do. They, they only just keeping, you know, for, uh, like, you know, for their, like, you know, to keep the power, especially they, they really want to, uh, they they don't really want to know the what what happened in Myanmar, and yeah, this is why. Uh, so mainly journalists, you know, you have shared by you know once you you know the fake or fake a. This panic code is just like you know the fake news spreading fake news and also just living in like inc incitement. Just mm -hmm. something, okay. You, uh, just you know spreading misinformation and disinformation. You know, just in terms of they are making uh to keep a you know to to arrest the uh, you know, yeah to arrest journalists especially uh the load what the law is on their hand so what they want to do and um, so they can do anything that's why the previously i said you know they can do anything what they want to do so anytime they can arrest uh, even you know for journalists they have so many reasons so mm -hmm. just you know phase zero five 505A, and also they also have, you know, session uh, 171. This may, like a session 17, it may like an unlawful association. So journalists, you know, working and writing about news, so they they have to communicate with, you know, the people. So that is why they arrest them, because they are communicating with the people. So the people, they, you know, the military dislike. So that's why they are, you know, uh, contacting with the people. And the whole association, they, they, that's why they can share with and the association. So that is actually this is no meaning to you know any like you know for me that this, this is not any meaning. So we can see previously for like you know uh Matt Tata Kai, she is like a BBC media contributor. Mm -hmm. She uh sent for failure deal under like a fail or fail A and all session 17. Session 17 is just I said and the whole association. The one who contact with like a uh, opposition leader, uh, mm -hmm. and also uh, the the one uh, you know the the one could be like a uh, ethnic organization. So for journalists, we have to balance for our news, and also we have to be unique. Everyone can read and mm -hmm. understand, and also we have to look at for new who yeah for from every side. We have to we have to keep trying. So mm -hmm. so th this is the only. They can do that, and only that, that is why I said, you know, everything they can do what they want. So mm -hmm. just arrested, and also some deal of failure. So they don't have any, you know, cry, but they do that. They did it. You know, sure. yeah. Only known for her, but also many so journalists, at least two to three years, they are, mm -hmm. you know, and a shot, and they are in, in person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Chai, let me ask you, since uh, since so many journalists are now out of the country in Myanmar or in prison, uh, if they're still in the country, I mean, how important is it to uh, that we pay attention to those citizen journalists, average citizens putting things on websites, putting things on Twitter, so we know that seems like citizen journalists are just average people. They're not journalists going out and filming things. I mean, has that become an important way that we know outside what's going on? Um, actually, yes. Um, you know, since a lot of Myanmar journalists have left Myanmar because uh, the country is no longer safe for journalists since, you know, military, since the start of coup have raided uh, media newsroom and they're arrested mm -hmm. and some of them have died. You know, some of them um, have been, a few of them, like at least, at least four have been killed at the interrogation center um, with the, at least from my um, data, it's 68 people stay uh, at the jail, uh, you know, trying, being trialed, being trialed. Mm -hmm. And 173 okay. people have been, I mean, including citizen journalists have been arrested. Some of them mm -hmm. got freed recently under the pardon. Um, 
So like, you know, since a lot of Myanmar journalists no longer operate uh, due to safety and security reason at the country, inside the country, they have left mm -hmm. Myanmar. So most of the time, Myanmar media operating outside of the country are uh, relying on citizen journalists, um, you know, because like, you, you know, uh, running, uh, you know, operating as professional journalists no longer pay, pay it's safe, safe path for the journalists. So, you know, uh, media organization have to or rely on citizen journalists. And that's why some of citizen journalists have been arrested and some, a few of them have been killed at the, at the front line. So that's, that's what's happening. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, um, you know, media organizations are largely relying on citizen journalists currently um, since they can operate inside the country. Okay, and Suche, we had a really interesting audience question here. It's a good follow-up. Someone is asking, uh, the question is, can I ask if anyone is tracking the cases of the journalists who are in prison and the, do they have act, do they have any kind of legal support? Oh, um, you, you know, the journalists inside Myanmar, whether they are getting uh, help, legal help from by lawyers or any organization, is yes. that the answer? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, do. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, no legal, um, experts can help what Myanmar journalists are going through um, because, you know, military doesn't give access to um, lawyer family uh, when journalists are at the, at, the, at, you know, at the prison, at the detention center. Um, we don't, sometimes we don't even know if our family members, you know, um, are journalists, um, uh, where they have been and how they have been because military don't give access at all. That is why, like, at some point, a few of the journalists that have been killed, um, you know, were returned to the family being dead. We don't know how it's happened and, you know, why it happened. Uh, but the only reason they gave us, you know, um, they got some sort of sickness at their very uh, limited times, very within very short times. Um, um, so basically, um, journalists at the jail, you know, inside prison doesn't have any access to justice, you know, any legal expertise, experts, you know, family, any legal organization can't really have anything, um, mm -hmm. anything for the ordeals, for the horrendous experience that journalists inside Myanmar prison go through. Basically, we don't have a, um, no help, you know, so that's, that's what's, what's going on with the Myanmar journalist. Yeah. I have to ask you both a question. It's an interesting question that came in from the audience. So, Che, I'll start with you. The question is, uh, are your families back in Myanmar in any danger because you're out of the country and you're willing to speak openly, including in this uh, Zoom talk? I mean, is there, are your families okay? <laughs> Um, honestly, that's something I uh, carefully consider uh, to put myself on spot like this, you know, talking to um, talking to you all in public, which later on military, Myanmar military might probably, um, um, you know, know it later. Um, if, if what I said here might poke something, um, you know, might poke military and, you know, um, anger them, um, my family, could be in danger, um, but if if they don't, I mean, um, if they they think it lately, uh, I guess they should be fine. Um, but I'm I'm putting myself here um, to talk about what's really happening because it's really important for all of us um, as a journalist, as a journalist as well as as citizens of Myanmar and for the people. Um, I think it's really important to talk about it. Um, that's where I'm putting myself here. Mm -hmm. And uh, Josan, what about you? I saw you nodding. What about are you? You've got family back there. You're in Hawaii. Are they okay? Even though you're speaking out here. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So especially so I, I'm my you know I'm my belief you know as much as I you know I'm keep myself to save uh, also my family as priority, but so many so or, or like you no. Know, many so like Myanmar, even including Maine. So we are like for generally, especially we have you know responsibility to talk the truth and what happening in Myanmar. Although I'm just you know even myself, you know I'm just you know out of the country. But so many so like you know our college, our fellow, like you know uh, in jail, like you know at least uh, at least forty two people. So we have to look at that and. Uh, also, we have to raise, yeah, so they are also, you know, real, you know, situation, also, they are also facing the same, everyone else. 
So I myself, yeah, I care my family a lot, uh, but I have to tell what I have to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, very brave. Let me let me ask you one question. I'm just wondering about how how it works logistically. A lot of the journalists are outside places like Frontier Myanmar. They can still cover what's happening from outside, but journalists are in Thailand. How do they get paid? How do they, how do they, how do, how do, how do the journalists not even in Myanmar, how do the organizations stay running? I mean, you have to, you have to pay for daily necessities. You have to eat. I mean, we know journalists weren't very well paid in the beginning, but I'm just wondering what, what are the economics of that? Um, Josan, what do you think? Um, so I, I actually, I'm just, I'm working as a, like a freelance internet journalist. I'm not like, you know, I'm in the like, media industry really very much. But I, as much as I know, for people from like for journalists, especially mm -hmm. they didn't get very much payment. Just in computer, mm -hmm. like international media for local media, mm -hmm. they get only like a small amount of money. Uh, but for just right now in Thailand, so many so my friends, I know some of people. So even they can extend the visa. They are visa in Thailand because so the in the visa fee is. So much amount of their, you know, amount, you know, I, I can say so much higher than their salary. So they are really facing the situation. But the thing is that only they want to tell the world to what happened in Myanmar. So also, they are that's when they are working, they are keep working, and uh, only like you know, they are working especially for their job. Uh, they they are not thinking about you know their uh, like salary and their. Uh, uh, they are like you know payments or just something, so it's hard to say. For yeah, I said really, I really respect that because they are really hard situation. But they keep posting and they keep uh, you know writing down what happened in Myanmar. Yeah, this is mm -hmm. so amazing. Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask both of you another question from the audience here. I mean, do you have any advice for the young journalists who are trying to cover Myanmar news on the ground today? I mean, obviously it's. It's dangerous, but is there a difference? The question is: Is there a difference if they're doing just trying to do business and economic coverage versus political coverage, for example? Uh, so, Jay, you go first. What do you think? Any advice for the young journalists who are trying to cover things from inside Myanmar today? Um, because what we are saying is a lot discouraging. But please don't be discouraged uh, of you know what's happening in Myanmar. As 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 journalists, you are you're responsible for reporting. You are uh, you should be doing it um, without um, you know being afraid. We, we, I mean, like we all are afraid of you know what could happen to us. But uh, please don't put that fear at the first place um, because we as a journalist care about other people, right? So um, so I would suggest. Uh, for young journalists to cover is be be careful and and you know uh, try to take it protectively to protect yourself before you put yourself um, at the spot. Um, you know, get suggestions from the uh, senior you know experienced journalists um, on how to report certain things, and then read lots of news about you know how to um, how to report safely, um, you know, protectively of yourself as well as your sources um, at at this point of um, violent and very risky and precarious time in Myanmar. Um, so you, you you should reach out to like senior journalists and experienced journalists. Um, so that's that's my um, first first um, um, suggestions. Um, and then you know try to also um, talk as, as many journalists as possible or to know about um, how how to um, protectively and, and effectively uh, cover certain this certain situation. Um, that could be uh, my best suggestions to you. Sure. Thank you for that. Very much appreciated. Uh, Josan, same thing, same question. What advice to the young journalists who are there trying to do the, do, the, to do the Lord's work, cover things on the ground inside Myanmar? What would you tell them? Um, yes. So as words well as like uh, Matsu uh, also talks the same way. Um, uh, yes. So first I'm saying, for two enters and to report from the ground, it is impossible at the moment. So even though so you can say I'm not a reporter for politics, but everything related to politics, uh, we have to remind that uh, the military will let go for the foreign journalists uh, enter to the country. This is not just today, just, you know, it's all the time. It's 
system, they have many numerous military first restraint journalists and even restraint internet shutdown. Not only the journalists, but also the whole internet shutdown. Even after, like, you know, uh, last two years, from February today, so we don't, we didn't accept internet in Myanmar, military shutdown mm-hmm. internet, almost for like in two or three months. Yeah. So, so especially to cover such a situation, so uh, have to, oh, you know, really have to build connection with the people, uh, especially like, you know, my is a senior journalist and also have to talk, okay, what kind of, you know, issue have to cover us and, and also for people from Myanmar, they are really honest and they are really working, uh, but they are also really careful at the moment because they know that journalists, uh, talking to journalists is kind of like a criminal in, mm-hmm. in their feeling. Uh, mm-hmm. So have really have to be careful on that. Uh, so especially, uh, can you like, you know, especially for our people uh, right now, the host and the Myanmar people, can you like a signal, you know, application to co- mm-hmm. communicate with the people, especially they didn't you very much what's up and they mm-hmm. have to communicate. And also if uh, I want to come from Myanmar, have to read the people. So for people mm-hmm. from Myanmar, they really use peaceful. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So every day, you know, situation update and the peaceful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Josan, are there still are there still foreign media outlets or foreign journalists working in Myanmar, and and how are they how are they doing? Uh, I think I so as much as I I, I know I, I don't see anyone you know in foreign journalists inside Myanmar right now. Mm-hmm. So after three months after you know actually I three months after military coup April I led the country at the time only a few of people like only three of people three or four people are uh, foreign journalists in Saint Myanmar. And then, yeah, almost six months after military could there is no, uh, there, there was no foreign journalist in Saint Myanmar. Mm-hmm. And uh, 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 Sucha, you were working for AFP when you were there. I mean, did, how, do, how do the agencies like AFP now cover Myanmar? Because it's probably difficult to send foreign journalists or even have local journalists there working in, in, for the foreign news agencies. How does that work now? Um, from what I can tell, um, but I'm not. I'm no longer the uh, reporter, so um, sure. I would just, I would just say um, from what I'm aware of. Um, I recently heard there was one case with uh, one of our bureau chiefs. So you know he had to leave the country, and 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 you know we no longer have our bureau chief there anymore. Um, so we only have a, a few of um, AFP staff in say, inside Myanmar, um, um, like like very protectively and very carefully reporting about what's happening but most of the time um they can't really go anywhere you know they're just they're just relying on um cj basically like string guards um reporting from you know you know being there um so we have a a, a network of connection a network and connection um in in most of the places so mostly we rely on them and you know get the information and and very far with them about what's going on so basically um to report about uh, conflict and to report about um landslide or anything um related to our current situation so we largely rely on them because you know as you know with the current um political situation and violence um we can travel anywhere so uh, even for fb we we can no, you know, AFP can no longer um, mm-hmm. operate, um, you know, run the office um, as it used to uh, work. Mm-hmm. Um, so, can I also add, add to your last questions about sure. how Myanmar journalists uh, in Thailand are, you know, doing and how they are mm-hmm. working? Um, basically, from what I heard about, you know, how they're doing is really uh, appalling. I mean, like, you know, most of some of them don't have a. Um, the organization they are working for, they're like just stringers, um, freelancers working, um, working in Thailand because they couldn't work inside Myanmar since you know they can travel anywhere and you know they, they can do anything and having to stay uh, with the constant fear and worry, um, you know, being journalist always uh, at the target of the military, um, you know, not being able to sleep at night, always having to worry, like always have to oh, stay up late, you know, if, yeah. if military soldiers would knock the door and, and, you know, arrest you. So with that fear, you know, journalists couldn't stay inside. So they had to, um, you know, they had to leave mm-hmm. the country and stay uh, 
stay in Thailand, you know, the, the, at the border, like um, uh, Mesa and Chiang Mai, uh, where they could, um, you know, work um, remotely, remotely, you know, get access mm -hmm. to the people inside Myanmar. Um, so most of them don't have a um, organizations, although they are there. So uh, what happened on a daily basis is, you know, getting only some more amount of money for the news story they sent out to certain mm -hmm. media organization. With that small amount, they can sustain. So some of, you know, basically, you know, when they came, um, they mm -hmm. were documented journalists with their proper visa. But at some point, because, you know, the, the amount of money, the salary they're getting is so small, so tiny, they can even survive. Some of mm -hmm. them um, become undocumented. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, some of them are really, really struggling. Uh, strikingly, only mm -hmm. a few of the media organizations really can help for their journalists, but not a lot of them can help with that. Um, you know, certain organizations, certain media outlets do not give us, you know, do not give um, decent amount of money to those journalists. Maybe they mm -hmm. might have certain difficulties within their organization, mm -hmm. but what, 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 you know, basically, um, what Myanmar journalists in Tala. Um, has been going through it is it's a lot worse than um kind of inside Myanmar because you know mm -hmm. in Thailand uh, they have to care for the police they have to care for the uh, administration sometimes mm -hmm. um they have to pay like tons of like they have to pay a huge amount of money for police if they're caught so they also have to have they don't have that kind of you, you know support system um by their media organization. So with what's going on um, with the Myanmar journalists inside Thailand is also very precarious for them. Um, mm -hmm. so you, it seems like Myanmar journalists in Thailand um, need a true support from other um, maybe international organizations. That's mm -hmm. that's what I'm hearing from journalists in, in Thailand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, in fact, oh. that was a uh, go ahead. Oh, what was the question? Sorry, I, I forgot to answer. Oh, the, 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 there was a question coming in from the audience that asked the question, do you have a message or a key message to those donors, those donors that support international media organizations? For example, are they aware of the immigration situation in Thailand and the costs? Um, I, I'm not sure if they're aware of this. Uh, you know, it seems like some people are doing some sort of work uh, around this area, but they're not covering um, entire situation, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because like, um, it's it's really also hard to cover entire situation, I guess, but you know, we have to make this case uh, more uh, uh, aware, right? Um, among mm -hmm. the people, among the media organizations, among the international organizations that are helping Myanmar journalists. Um, mm -hmm. if, if this is not known, right? If this is not mm -hmm. um, aware by the other organizations, mm -hmm. uh, we should talk about this. Um, and I, I hope, mm -hmm. you know, this, this voice uh, can somehow um, be a help for them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, thanks. And uh, 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 let me bring you in, Josan. Just another question I have well, for both of you, but I'll start with you, Josan. Um, let's talk about, let's turn it around and talk about the media coverage of what's happening, it's especially the international media coverage. Because, you know, every day I turn on BBC or CNN or, or any, and I see all kinds of stories, maybe the first half of the broadcast about what's happening in Ukraine. And uh, I don't see that much anymore about what's happening in Myanmar. We might see a little bit now because it's the anniversary, but. Uh, do you think the international media uh, is paying enough attention to what's happening in uh, in Myanmar, especially because this month is also the one year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine? <laughs> uh, what do you think, Joseph? Um, uh, yes, so it's hard to say, especially so for international like the media outlets. So I can say they didn't pay very much attention. Attention. Yes, only two, you know, story. They are website like you no. Know, uh after like you know six months military you know to put in Myanmar, the afghanistan case and also ukraine so mm -hmm. so they focus on mostly like afghanistan and also ukraine and russia even today uh there is like an anniversary two year anniversary yes we are you know only you know one story but you can see like until next three months the international media won't publish any story about the Myanmar. it's a really hard to get in even for uh, I also have, you know, experience trying to, you know, to pitch for international media. 
So throughout my story, yeah, especially for the conflict, uh, in 2000, the 2000, uh, like 2018 to 2020, the whole two years, there only like three to four articles published by international media. So I try to pitch, and then same like uh, July, June, yeah, first week June, I'm probably, but I almost, you know, international media reject me. Uh, Late August, my first story, yeah, yeah, was set by the foreign policy. My first mm -hmm. time, yeah, foreign policy was probably, yeah, probably in September, late September, almost one month. So before that, it's really hard to, uh, to push and for Myanmar issue and you know, in what happened in Myanmar. This is before military coup, but after military coup, almost three months, so there's a really good attention. A lot of me, me, the international media want to probably, like, you know, I mean, at least. Uh, a story per month. This is good now, actually, for international media. They don't interest that very much. Right now, I'm saying some more international media. I look at uh, almost two years. Only two, within two years, they probably only two story and three story about the Myanmar. But for Ukraine and also uh, Russia issue and Afghanistan, like, you know, other issues. So they are, are weak, they are especially Taiwan issue. So, so many, you know, media probably Daily, uh, you can also check New York Times. I can say the else we are like you know twelve to uh twelve to sixteen article we publish within two years in the New York Times. This is this is actually this is this like you know, the amount of article uh for like you know for Ukraine and uh, you know Russia issue and also like in Taiwan. They can see every day, you know, relieving their information and about talking in this issue. But for Myanmar, it's really hard to, I think they, they may be really hard to get information or they are really hard to publish about Myanmar. Mm -hmm. so I'm not sure, you know, in this between question. Mm -hmm. what, do, what do you think, Suchay? I mean, you know, as you know, the media has a very short attention span. Uh, you know, the, when, when the when the coup happened two years ago, February 2021, there was a lot of coverage, front page stories. But when it went on and on and on and on, after six months, after a year, people kind of just got tired and moved elsewhere. Do, do you agree? Or no? um, yes, I definitely agree with with, with that statement, with that view. Um, because I think um, after Russia, you. Russian invasion of Ukraine, uh, Myanmar news has become a lot, um, you know, um, it, it, it disappeared from the uh, inter international media. Um, I think it's it's probably because of, um, you know, Russia invasion of Ukraine, because that, that, um, that concerns the rest of the world, like uh, US and uh, uh, Europe. Um, uh, militarily and economically, uh, politically too. Uh, whereas Myanmar cases, um, you know, fighting against each other is just civil war that doesn't really concern the rest of the world um, economically or anything, right? So um, it it could be largely because of that. Um, and then at some, you know, after two years, um, Myanmar become um, um, kind of you know, a lot calmer anyway, although there are fightings going on um, in, in different areas of the country. Mm -hmm. um, but that has become a lot like, um, you, you know, common thing, usual thing, you know, people mm -hmm. die, you know, how many people die. But in, in, in international media to feed the audience, they only care for, you know, a lot of dramatic, um, you know, numbers, and then, you know, a lot of casualties. Unless that happens, they don't really uh, think mm -hmm. it's worth reporting. That could be also uh, mm -hmm. one of the stories. Uh, at the same time, I think, um, you know, uh, since we don't have a, um, you know, political figure that can represent Myanmar uh, as a uh, like powerfully as Aung San Suu Kyi, Nobel Laureate Aung San Suu Kyi, um, in, she's inside jail, right? She's she's in jail, mm -hmm. and, and there's nobody else that can perfectly, you know, powerfully uh, represent Myanmar and the world level. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, for the for the world, they don't have anyone to really uh, mm -hmm. look up to and you know uh, listen to. Um, so, like. Mm -hmm. I, th I think, you know, not having a lack of someone like that could also be um, the reason uh, maybe uh, that's wrong. But, you know, that's how I see um, mm -hmm. Myanmar news has disappeared from international mm -hmm. attentions. Yeah. 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 I'd heard I've read an interesting analysis uh, today that basically said the, that Ukraine covering Ukraine is easier for international Western media 
because you have the good guys and the bad guys. The Russians are the bad guys. The Ukrainians are the good guys. And you have Zelensky as the President Zelensky of Ukraine is this figure that everybody can go to and quote him and talk to him, where they said, you look at Myanmar, and they said, it's too confusing. Uh, you have the military junta there, but then you have all these ethnic groups that have armies, and then you have fighting going on in different places, but nobody knows kind of what these different ethnic groups are, and there's no one leader of the of the anti-government opposition there, so it makes it more confusing to cover, and journalists like simpler stories, so very interesting. Yeah, there's, a, there's one interesting uh, uh, question coming in from the audience. They're saying that with authoritarian regimes, they constantly use uh, you know, all kinds of places, misinformation and conspiracy and confusion. And they're asking, does the Myanmar junta use these tactics too of misinformation and information confusion? And uh, and does it work? Is it working? <laughs> uh, Josan, let's start with you on that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you very much for the question. So historically, yeah, Myanmar, like a military using the thing like no propaganda for misinformation and disinformation. So they also mm -hmm. have their own media. So I think at least four to six media, they also have their own media platform, um, Yaudi, uh, yeah, and also they have like uh like MRTV, so they have their own like you know, state owned uh, propaganda media. Uh, mm -hmm. But the thing is, up uh, in Myanmar, so Myanmar people used to read, you know, their their propaganda, their fake news. So, but the very obvious after military coup, uh, so the peaceful, you know, restraint the Myanmar military, uh, you know, state, especially Myanmar state uh, own media, Myanmar military media, and also the Google almost, you know, the, the platform, uh, uh, restraint about the media. And inside mm -hmm. Myanmar, so after the coup, so almost people, especially within five years, uh, from uh, like to twenty, uh, especially twenty, uh, twenty fifteen to twenty twenty, within five years, Myanmar people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they really, I can say, you know, some of the, the mostly the people to get like a serious uh, knowledge and you know, serious awareness of the people, you know, the sense of like you know, uh, the fate and also. Uh, the uh, fake information, some myths, or like you know, disinformation, you know, to differentiate between mm -hmm. you know myths or disinformation uh, after like within failure. So I don't say very much, but they got at least you know understanding more about you know how the military, uh, the uh, spreading information you know, through their media platform. So mm -hmm. no one read about Myanmar media platform until today after military for two years. Uh, so also even for international media, so for the uh, for using for their quotation, just using that's all. They did not you you know post on the peaceful. Even me, I never post about what is way in the in the media. So I never post any peaceful and my tweet, you know, my tweet. Also, I never tweeted their uh, you know what what is they are doing. But some important issue what you know not uh, uh, the military, you know, making it down and. Uh, Setting down and just something making decision. So I just, uh, yeah, I just you know, uh, used for you know for quotation only. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So most of the people, so I can say they are mentioned in you know, spreading based on this information already fall down. Yeah, in Myanmar. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got about five minutes. If you've got a last question you want to put in the chat box, everybody who's listening in. Uh, one question, uh, interesting question came in from the audience. I'll see uh, Suchai. You can try. It says, how do you see the influence of media ownership in Myanmar on what was Myanmar's democratization process, I guess, before this started? The media ownership, how, how, what was the influence of that? Any, any thoughts on that? Or Josan, I see you shaking your head. Any, yeah, any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah. So I'm saying for in Myanmar, especially for myself, or also for many of my, like, you know, my ASU and people, because of mm -hmm. media, because of the independent media, we, we got news and we read and also we got writers, the information. And mm -hmm. uh, we also see the world, what happening because of the, the media, you know, this is the most important. And also the, the, the democrat, democratization process, the Myanmar independent media played very crucial and essential role. And uh, after, uh, we can obviously see, but in Myanmar, there's only almost like you know, 
uh, the major media outlet, like only mm -hmm. five to six media outlet, the independent media, like mm -hmm. Myanmar Now, Yahoo TV, and Mesima, DBV, and also the Frontier Myanmar. There's only mm -hmm. the key, you know, media outlet that play in the role, uh, the like independently and also using the information, like, you know, like on time. Uh, this is really important. Uh, also, they play very much the people, and especially the most of young people read it through media. So it's mm -hmm. really effective for you know democratic process here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but uh, we've got uh, a couple of questions. One more question, an interesting one from the audience. Uh, probably the last audience question. Then I'll ask you one closing one. It says, uh, "Which fe what future do you think is possible, and what's brightest?" Uh, for the media in Myanmar, what's the future hold? Uh, Suchai, what do you, what's the future for media in Myanmar? What's the best case scenario? Well, <laughs> um, Myanmar, Myanmar future, I mean, future for journalism is um, same as future of Myanmar. Um, if Myanmar, uh, the future of Myanmar generally is not going to be better in the next five years. And the same is for journalism in Myanmar, because, you know, um, um, journalists are at the forefront of this um, revolution, kind of, uh, because, you know, journalists are reporting about what's happening. Um, so, you know, consequently, journalists come under fire. Um, so um, it depends, it really depends on what Myanmar country uh, will look like. I mean, it depends on the outlook of Myanmar, um, how outlook of Myanmar in the next five years will look like. Um, I, can, I can really honestly imagine uh, the better future in the next five years with, with this, you know, standstill, you know, fighting and, you know, with everything and, you know, military um, yesterday, you know, they had to do something um, because they have to um, come up with the, oh, I, I forgot the word for that. So, so they, they try to sustain in power uh, for at least next six, six months or, you know, a year. So it seems it will continue like that. So um, Myanmar under that military regime um, will always be the same unless something mm -hmm. change in the near future. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we need a lot of, you know, um, help from international uh, communities in, in, you know, US, you know, EU, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of people that care for democracy and freedom um, that Myanmar people are fighting for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Josan, do you, are you more optimistic or less optimistic than the Suche there about the future of media oh, yes, in Myanmar? I, yes. Yeah, I yeah, I I really agree with her because as long as uh, we are, you know, under military rule, uh as the same as today, so our like you know, media and journalism are under attack and also restriction. Uh, every journalism uh, every journalist you know, could, could be, you know, at risk and also under watch and, and attest every day, just today we are facing. So, so the thing is, uh, so for myself, I really want to encourage, uh, you know, for the international uh, international organization and, and also you and other, like, you know, who will care about the media freedoms and uh, democracy. So this is the time uh, for Myanmar generally have to fall. And so we are facing and we are really struggling, even though, you know, in a lot of people, a lot of journalists in the Mesa and, and Mesa and in, especially in China, so they are really facing the situation, but they are, you know, struggling and uh, uh, reporting daily what happening in Myanmar, inside of Myanmar. They are, they are keep going. Also, they didn't have, they didn't get their proper scope in international community. So, so, and all this is the thing that as uh, if, you know, our journalism recruit us and the people with Myanmar, we're also like, you know, really aware of and also the world what's happening in Myanmar. This is the mm -hmm. only like an interconnected with, you know, each other. Mm -hmm. That is what I see. So my conclusion point is as long as we are living under military rule, so we are, we were facing the same as to, was, uh, yeah, as mm -hmm. the same as today. Mm -hmm. That's about Myanmar's future. I'd, I'd like to ask you each, what about your own futures? Jo Sun what 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 are your plans after you finish this uh, this time in Hawaii at the University of Hawaii? what 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 next for you? Do you see yourself going back to Myanmar, staying outside? what's going to what's happening? Um yeah, so yeah, as just recently, I can say as long as you know the military holding the power, so I couldn't go back home. I couldn't go to see. So I would definitely say, you know, keeping my work. I was reporting from the outside of the country. 
And mm -hmm. also, I will think about for my future to, you know, go to the academy world, but I'm not sure yet, but I will, uh, I will have to, uh, I will have to, you know, struggle a lot, you know, between my career and also struggling. And even for you know, my family, I have to care about and also for my people. So that is in the, in the meantime, I will keep my word and also reporting about the Myanmar as much as I can. I'm writing about to where the like especially the politics and uh, ethnic, you know, issue and like human rights violation and conflict in Myanmar. I will, yeah, at least I can say at least next three years, I will definitely uh, work on that. And so Jay, in four months, if all goes well, you will have a master's of journalism degree from the University of Hong Kong. What are you going to do? <laughs> Um, I'm pretty excited about my graduation, <laughs> even if I'm now. <laughs> uh, but honestly, like, you know, of uh, the future, you know, my future as a journalist, you know, as a citizen from Myanmar, depends on uh, Myanmar country, really. You know, um, my future hangs in there, just as Myanmar future. Um, but if after this graduation, I hope to be able to get a job at a, at a media organization, like international media organization, mm -hmm. uh, ideally. Um, mm -hmm. And I hope to be able to work um, from like Bangkok or like in Hong Kong, because um, although um, I'd like to go back to Myanmar, but Myanmar doesn't really give, um, I don't think that would be safe for me uh, to return um, because, um, more or less, you know, if I, I, I stay there, I can do anything much. So um, mm -hmm. my future, my life will be always under the, you know, rather under, uh, under the watch of military. Um, so what is the point of being inside, not being able to report and then always have always having to live mm -hmm. with a constant fear. Um, so um, what I'm thinking is um, I hope to be able to get a job after this graduation and work from somewhere abroad. Uh, um, remotely and safely and, and do as much as I can and, you know, report on Myanmar situation. Um, and that's how I see my future. Yeah. Well, you're both uh, brave to be speaking out here. I, I do hope you can, can continue to write about Myanmar, even if you have to do it for now from outside. And let's hope that you can get back in and all the journalists, all the brave journalists who are writing about Myanmar from Thailand and overseas countries can get back in at some point. And, uh, you know, our, our thoughts and support go out to all the journalists and citizen journalists who are on the ground there, uh, some, do, some in prison, some trying to report from uh, Yangon and on the ethnic areas under great duress. Uh, they have our support from HKU Journalism. We'll do everything we can. I want to thank you two, uh, Su Chai and also uh, Joe Sang Rang, for joining us, uh, for uh, enlightening us, for talking to our journalism students and others who have chimed in. It's such an important topic. Uh, we want to make sure we here at HKU, the journalism want to make sure it doesn't uh, drop out of the news, even though I know there are other big stories happening in the world. So again, I want to thank you. I want to thank all of our participants for joining us. I think this will be uploaded to our website or should be available soon. Uh, so others who couldn't join now at this time can, can, can avail themselves. Thank you again. It was a somber anniversary to have to mark, but I'm glad we were able to do it. Uh, again, and on behalf of everybody in our team here at HKU Journalism, I want to wish you a good evening. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.